As fans across America get ready for another season of college football, one team is already in full swing. This is the making of EA Sports NCAA Football 12. Developing the game is a multi-layered process, often more complex than a Hollywood blockbuster film. The pre-production meeting is the first step in the journey. It is here where the video game is fundamentally developed, and it is a process that can springboard the team to unprecedented success or set the project on a course for failure. First of all, Congratulations, everybody, on 11. I think uh, our strategy paid off really well with the U. You know, we, we committed to the core gameplay presentation, the sights and the sounds, and uh, that's resonating well. With our game development, we have a core concept called the U. The bottom crossbar is gameplay. That's what the game's all about. It's how we're making it the most authentic game possible. Everything else is nice, but gameplay is the key. Along with that, you've got the two uprights with the sights and the sounds. So that's how the game looks in the stadiums, the uniforms, how the players look. Then there's the sound, and that's just what you're hearing when you're playing the game, the crowd roaring, the commentary, and all the different aspects that make it what the sounds of college football are. All those together kind of form that U shape, and then from there we fill up that U with a bunch of different features from Dynasty to Road to Glory to Online, anything else that really kind of add the extra elements to the game. Each year there are technology upgrades within the game, and this year is no different as the team uses Ant to create its new tackling system. So, I don't know, maybe you want to start talking about the, the character interaction stuff that we're planning on doing with gameplay this year. So, I mean, we've always been trying to catch up on this new Ant technology that we use within EA, which is our animation system, so that characters are interacting in the in the animation tools. So what that really does is that helps make them you know look better as the characters are coming together. So basically tackles won't occur until collision occurs. For me I think the key is when a consumer fires up 12, they're gonna instantly know that it's not 11. From the intro video on in, uh, you're gonna know instantly that this is not 11. I wish Gene here's here to talk about visuals, but I can share kind of a couple of the things that, that he's really excited about. Even though we made a significant upgrade to lighting in 11, he can blow it out for 12. He's got this thing he's calling HDR lighting, and then the crowds, you know, with the, the quality of the crowds. In addition to enhancing gameplay and visual appeal, this year the team targets key modes like Dynasty and Road to Glory. So there, there's the gameplay, the sights and sounds. That's just kind of a quick overview of the U. So let's talk Dynasty. There's two main things we gotta, we gotta do. Um, we talked about coaching carousel a little bit. I mean, that's a huge request in community. So number one, get coaches involved in, in Dynasty. So what, what is coaching carousel? So I mean, that, that's you being the coach. I mean, right now you're kind of the program. You handle everything. This is you being the coach, you know, getting a job, moving from school to school, kind of being the coach and running that program. We don't really have that element right now. I mean, you're kind of, kind of the coach, but you're not really. You're, you know, you never really get fired. You never get held accountable for the job that you're doing. So I think the other story is obvious. I mean, if you're following college football right now, I mean, it's conference realignment. So get that ability to to grow a conference or shrink a conference down. So we've got two great depth stories. Yeah. You know, with Dynasty. Uh, big black eye last year. No road to glory upgrade. Yes. Last thing we're going to talk about, and we've got the perfect guy. So let's talk about it. I mean, yeah. for, for the Road to Glory features, it, there, there's a few, like three real big, you know, new depth stories I think that we've got. And it starts with the high school experience. There's a couple of things that are really good about it. You know, it's quick games, like 15 minute games. You're taking it all the way from your senior year and playoffs all the way through college. But if we could expand on that, there's so much more we could do. Like, we haven't even really tapped into the real recruiting process that you could do in high school. There's no better feeling than running out of the stadium and hearing 80,000 you know, fans just going crazy. So that's what I want to do. I want to recreate that exact everything that I did there. It's going to be a much richer uh, overall high school experience. Yeah. So pre-production's a process by which we bring together thousands of ideas. We bring together ideas from our community, 
ideas we've held over from previous years we weren't able to get to, and everybody brings their pet ideas as well. A time frame we call concept and discovery. Just what are we gonna do this year? What are the big features? What are the big things that we're gonna try and target? It? We don't throw anything out. We can do anything we want to. Um, the next stage we kind of call design and planning. We're figuring out exactly what we're gonna do and scoping it down to the project. And then from there we start our first part of production, which is really just getting the technology in place. Then we hit alpha, and alpha is really all about cleaning the game up, polishing things up, making it look the best it can be, getting the game as bug free as possible. Then we come into to the final area, which is called beta, which is the game is basically done, you know, the, the bugs are cleaned up, we're ready to go. We're just trying to finish off the final little bit, the, you know, the final pieces here and there, get the game ready to go out the door. It's never easy, right? Because you want to get everything in and you're running out of time. Uh, we have to make some very hard choices at the end of the day. In pre production, the plan is set in place. But it's during motion capture that on-the-field action begins to come to life. Motion capture is just a massive part of NCAA. There's so many variations of uh, tackles and blocks and catches and throws that trying to do those by hand time-wise wouldn't be possible. And we go up to EAC, our, our studio in Vancouver, where we have a mocap studio and we bring in uh, players that used to play in the NCAA, and that's where we do all of our tackles and blocks. Our mocap studio, you can see these, uh, there's lots of these red cameras, and everybody's marked up with the little reflective balls, and these cameras basically will only see these little reflective balls, and then they have software that can take those balls and with all those cameras they can triangulate their position in the in the space and the mocap studio sends us all of the data they send us multiple videos of every shot we have descriptions and then once we've identified which file we want to use for something we'll put that into motion builder where we edit all the animation we bring that into our animation engine which is uh, ant but it's really powerful it gives us tons of ability to decide when a tackle should play, how it should play, how it should blend with something else. Um, it, it's, uh, it's a really powerful tool. When we return, a former Auburn running back gets his shot and lends his expertise to the development of Road to Glory. For 18 years, NCAA football has been a staple in EA Sports lineup. Over time, the franchise has positioned itself as one of the most authentic experiences in sports gaming. It's unbelievable. You know, the NCAA franchise started in 1993 with Bill Walsh College Football. We didn't even put dates on it at all. College Football USA 97, this here is the game that changed my life forever. Think back to games back to the early, early days. The football was a, basically a block, and you got 2D graphics, and it, it wasn't very pretty. If I look back 13 years ago when I started, the core you know, fundamentals of what we're trying to create actually haven't changed. You know, it's, if it's in the game, it's in the game. You know, it's still all about authentic, you know, sports and, and the reality. While that hasn't changed, certainly the technology has with the, the, the graphics capability and, and all the things that we can do now. We've uh, moved consoles over the years. We went from the, the PS2 onto the PS3 and the Xbox onto the Xbox 360. I think anybody that has played those games has seen the graphical leap that we made just going from the, the, the old generation consoles. It's now all about high definition graphics, 7.2 surround sound, you've got an internet connection. The authenticity of the stadiums, you've got four wireless controllers and you're playing with your friends all over the country. You know, Road to Glory was 06, that was the first time, it was great right for the Heisman at that point, but that was the first time you had a single character focused just on you, and every sports game now has adopted that. And there's almost no comparison to seven years ago to what the game has become today, it's, it's pretty mind blowing. Just as the game has developed and grown over time, so did the career of running back Alex Howe. The football life of Alex Howe is what the Road to Glory game mode is all about. 
I'm Alex Au. I'm a designer on NCAA football. I'm in charge of Road to Glory. Um, my day-to-day -day activities consist of tuning the Road to Glory progression system and coming up with new designs. Um, this right here, I'm, I've, I've been tuning this for like, honestly, the past like 10 days. If I ever have any problems about anything that needs to get done, two seconds with my manager and it's done. He's bringing something that you know, you just can't put a value on this. I mean, he's got the experience of, you know, being recruited as a high school football player and going to a big time college football program. So he's seen it from that side. In college for me, I played at Auburn. Behind Carno Williams, Ronnie Brown, Brandon Jacobs, it was kind of hard to, to actually get a, a playing time. But here, here, in, here on uh, Auburn's team right now, you know, if I play well enough in the next three weeks, I'll be starting. Since it's a player-centered world with Road to Glory, that I'm putting everything that I learned in college and putting it into the game. I'll be working really closely with him, but you know, I, I think he's gonna do some great things and, and really excited to have him here. I see a bright future for Alex. This is literally a dream come true. The Tiburon campus was founded in 1994 and currently has more than 600 employees. It's the home of NCAA football as well as Madden NFL and Tiger Woods PGA Tour. We'll take you around a tour and I'll show you some good things. Let's go. But Felix over here with his Florida stuff everywhere. He's so proud of, of, of his Florida. I gotta keep the bad orange and blue in check because this is the good orange and blue. Yeah, that's the time we just start walking the other way. This is the dark side. The part that I just don't ever want to come to is just seeing this stuff everywhere. It's just like an eyesore, an eyesore. Also, when we when the artists have to do some of their jersey uh, modifications, we have jerseys from you know tons of schools out here. So we make sure we get every single detail of NCAA play in the game. So this is the Madden floor. There's kind of a rivalry between Madden and NCAA, and uh, NCAA is a lot better. So of course, there's guys always in here playing different sort of games. These guys are killing it at ping pong. These guys are killing it at pool. You guys having a good time in here? Yeah. Definitely. Of course. Should be working right. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, we do that. Yeah, we don't work in here. Let's see if any of our upper management are here that we can harass them too. Uh, is there a ball pit jumping? No. Nope. Can I jump in the ball pit? In the middle of your meeting? If you do it quickly, you can. Yeah. Our upper management is like all my bosses. And I just ran in a meeting and jumped in the ball pit. That's great. I'm in trouble, I'm in serious trouble. Coming up, we see the journey from pre-production to integration as the game's art direction takes center stage. The visuals of NCAA Football 12 stem from the creativity of the game's art director, Gene Adams. For seven years, his team has delivered groundbreaking game simulation, and this year they aim to raise the bar even higher, making the Saturday experience come alive. My name is Gene Adams. I'm the art director on NCAA. We started with the idea that we wanted to touch every rendered pixel of the game. So we wanted to upgrade the field surface, we wanted to upgrade the crowd, and we also improved uniforms, dreadlocks, face masks, helmets, new cleats. We wanted to keep the momentum with the way the game is rendered. And so linear lighting, we built uh, HDR on top of that. And on top of the HDR, we added dynamic exposure. So when every time you look at the game, you're gonna see something. And so I started showing these photographs. Uh, here's Mike the Tiger. And when people started to see the, they, they started to think, wow, that's really cool. If we can get that into the game, adding this level of detail would surprise a lot of people. But even beyond that, we added dozens of uh, multiplayer celebrations, fans being tossed up into the sky. All of these visuals are important to college football because it's more than just something cool. It's the history of the school. It's the history of the team. And so that's why it's important. And that's why we, we feature it in this year's NCAA 12. We make it 100% authentic because we go to approval to the schools, and if something's off, they might not approve it. We go from reference to thumbnails, to storyboards, to in-game animatics, and then with the team, we iron out all of the bugs through dailies until we're happy with the results. No characteristic can be overlooked. 
Mascots, seat charts, sight lines, and many other fine details are incorporated to recreate the college game day experience. So Nick, where'd we end up on War Damn Eagle? Well, basically we found out that they don't use a bald eagle, they actually use a golden eagle. And uh, I had to do a little research to kind of find out what, what's the difference between this. So this is the main image that I've been using for some of the reference material. So I had to change a lot of the, uh, the color patterns, do a lot of work on the feathers around the neck. That's very cool. When does it get animated? Uh, we actually have a skeleton in here right now, so the animation's on here. I just have to uh, push these changes that I have to this model. So everything's set up on here, we just need to export it and get it put into game. And then it'll animate? Yeah, it'll have the animation that's already currently in game. Wow. With the new modeling changes and texturing changes. Very cool. I'm Eric Sherwood. I'm the lead environment artist on NCAA football. One of the biggest changes we have every year is field designs because people make small tweaks to, and if they have a new logo, then we have to go change all their fields to the latest logo. For their old design, the, uh, like the midfield logo was smaller and inside the 45s. And then in the spring day, they started this bigger logo that went out a few yards from the field. So we increased that in scale. In the spring, they did mow lines in the grass, so we added in the darker tones. And then they also updated their conference logo, so we changed that to match the ones they used in their spring game design. One of the most intricate schools is probably Texas, especially in the last few years, how they added the ginormous jumbotron that I think is supposed to be the largest in the nation. And then they bowled off that old end zone, so now you have this three-tier stadium that has this long press box that wraps around the stadium. And here come the Longhorns. Funny thing about this is actually, started when the art director, Gene, he came in one Monday, he's like, I just saw something on there during one of the games. It was really cool. I need you to make it for me. This year, we went even further with our in-game ESPN integration to make it look as authentic to a Saturday broadcast as we can do it. When we saw that they had a brand new style, we really wanted to make sure that we were on top of that. The score ticker got upgraded, the conference wipes and the bowl game wipes, and all the different aspects that you see on any given Saturday of an ESPN broadcast. Between last year, since it was brand new, we weren't exactly sure what we were able to do. At the end of last year, after we saw everything worked, I kind of wanted to start raising the bar a little bit and just pushing the system and seeing where I could take it. So everything that's going on here is, I don't know, maybe 10 times the size of what it was last year with just the ESPN wipes. Everywhere you look, there's something going on tied in with the ESPN look. That's really important to us because, I mean, ESPN is college football. Next, an extensive Facebook campaign keeps the fans involved in the game's development and execution. The Rivalry Moment of the Week is presented by Coke Zero. Many of college football's greatest moments happen when rivals line up on the gridiron. For Ray Lewis, it's all about the U versus Florida State. Yeah, mine will never change. That's 1994, beating Florida State in the Orange Bowl. You know, it was a mystique there that you, you can hear the voices of all of the greats before of saying carry the, carry the tradition of what we started here. Every industry is adjusting to the rapid growth and use of social media. And because most gamers are connected consumers, EA Sports is tapping into this audience to help improve the game, make decisions, and spread the word. So I have never done PR in a world where internet wasn't a factor. But even in the three and a half years that I've been doing it, it has changed tremendously, mostly in the social networking media. We now 
consider our social channels, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, a very important way to get our message out about these games. You know, I always say for years and years and years, we were a really good company about speaking to our customers. Is Ray Lewis pounding his chest and I'm coming for you. You feeling me? Uh, it's a completely different dynamic now. We still have that chest pounding competitive uh, vibe, but we're in a, a daily conversation with our fans. And if we're not, you're just gonna be left behind. If you think about you know, the 50 or so people we have on our team and the nine months or so of development, core development we put into the game, there's just no way we couldn't do it without help. Some of the uh, fans had noticed that the rambling wreck of Georgia Tech was in the wrong place of the stadium. What I did was I jumped onto the internet and did a quick Google search on the rambling wreck. I did find an image of the rambling wreck with the balloon archway and it's coming out of a corner of the stadium where you can see this overhang of the stadium and in the back you can see skyscrapers. Here's the vignette and we evidently need to move it onto this corner. I'm going to take our proprietary software called the vignette placement tool and what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply rotate it upon its axis and then translate it so it situates itself right in this corner. Our hardcore fans are extremely passionate about the game and that goes both ways. When they're upset about something, they are upset about something and we hear about it and we listen. That's the huge thing. Since we have such active fans and passionate fans, uh, marketing made a decision to, this year for the 12 title, do a fan vote with the You Want Me campaign. So that was an opportunity for fans to decide who was on the cover for the first time ever. I think being able to be voted on the cover by the fans, it allows the people that watch college football and are a part of college football to decide. It'll be real cool to be on the cover of the game. Just to know that fans appreciate you and want you on the cover of a game, um, that speaks a lot more than I think if just one person decided. The cover shoot has always been an integral part of product promotion, but it now serves an even greater role since social media is integrated into the process. From selection to completion, the Facebook cover campaign had more than 140,000 votes, another sign of the passionate fan base of NCAA football. With this ever-growing attention and more eyes on every phase of the game, the production team feels added pressure to not only produce a game that surpasses last year's product, but the growing expectations of its rabid fan base. This year with NCAA Football 12, it's a unique year because NCAA Football 11 made huge strides, and so that actually has been a title that people are very impressed with. So the NCAA Football 12 title is in really great position. There's just a little more pressure, I think, on NCAA Football 12 this year. With all that added focus, there's a ton of extra pressure, obviously. And you can feel that around the building. You know, we have to plan pretty carefully in terms of what we're going to build, and we have time constraint. This game is going to ship before the college football season every year. There's certain guys in the building that, you know, we're very date focused. We've got to, we've got to get the game out the door. Uh, there's other guys that are pushing every last feature into the game that they can. And uh, in fact, we're at that point right now where we're just, we're sitting in a room right before this discussion. We're looking at the bugs that we have left and we're saying, okay, what can we get to? What can't we get to? It's always a battle, but it's a good creative tension, you know, because the end result is, hey, we only have this much time, but everybody wants to get the game to the greatest possible level. Next week on the making of NCAA Football 12, EA announces the new cover boy in Bristol. And the winner of the EA Sports NCAA Football 12 cover contest is... Get some playbook insight from one of the best in the business. Coach, has anyone ever challenged you to play? Like, you know, get you on the sticks to see how you do? Well, know? I've been challenged a lot, but I'm smarter than that. I'm not going to grab one. And the plot thickens as the game team falls behind schedule. It's at the point where there are still going to be some major changes that need to happen. Just scary.